Hi everyone, Shane Armand Monroe here. If you are an advanced user of the Steam Deck or even Linux, you probably already know all about Proton. But if you don't know about Proton, I recommend my video up here. Go check it out so you have a good idea what the hell we're talking about. For those of you who are more 201 users of the Steam Deck, you're gonna really enjoy today's video. So the reigning champion uh, of handling other versions of Proton has always been the community favorite Proton Up QT. Now, both of the products we're going to be looking at today are available in the Discover Store because you will not have these uh, installed by default. So uh, both of these tools, both the reigning champion as well as the other one we're going to look at today, their job is to install compatibility layers Right, so Proton comes directly from uh, Valve. Well, Code Weavers, Via Valve, whatever. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble here, but if you go in and look here at um, the properties of any given game in Steam, you'll see that there is the opportunity to force a Steam Play compatibility tool. Now, if you do that, you're going to see lots of versions of Proton. Now, I've added a couple of versions of Proton, like GE Proton. Um, this version of Proton, this version of Proton, these aren't out of the box. These are ones that I've added personally. All of these are generic Protons, or I would call them generic because they're all provided by Valve and they're all included. So if we uncheck this box, right, it will default to what Valve wants you to use or whatever the latest current is. 99 times out of 100, I recommend you let Valve choose. All you're doing is adding more chaos and potential um, uh, issues with what you're doing when you're playing with other protons, especially if you really don't know what's going on, right? You saw some YouTube video that says, you should be using GE Proton, or you're looking at Reddit saying, I never use regular Proton, I always use GE Proton. But there's no reason to do that when Valve typically is doing a great job. Now, I have another chart here, and I'll overlay this uh, when I produce the video that shows how I handle custom versions of Proton. And I think this still stands even today. This is a couple years old. But my point is, if you want other versions of Proton, how do you get them? Sometimes uh, you may go to ProtonDB or you might be on Reddit and they say, listen, if you want to play this game, not this one, but I'm just using it as an example. If you want to play this game, you must use Proton, I don't know, 6. So it just so happens I have Proton 6 installed. Um, and you can do that, by the way, by searching for Proton uh, in your list, and you'll see all the versions of Proton installed and uninstalled that are official from Valve. So if I wanted to get 6.3 uh, or whatever, I could do that. But uh, if you need a specific version of Proton, that's typically how you install it. Uh, for third-party ones, you can't install that way. You need some external installer, and that's where Proton Up QT has always been, you know, sort of the community favorite. So let's say you wanted to add, um, I don't know, I've already got GE Proton on here, but let me say I wanted to add version 9 of GE Proton because it works better with a particular game because 10 broke something, whatever. This happens all the time. Um, so let's say I needed, you know, 916, 9 point, you know, 9 16 you do that, you hit install, and it goes out and it fetches it and it adds it to your list. Now you can see down here it's downloading, your mileage may vary in terms of speed, but then it gets added. Now remember, every time you add or remove a Proton uh, compatibility layer, you should exit and restart Steam. That's just kind of standard par for the course. But just a reminder in case you forgot, because if I were to go in right now and look at that game, uh, this new version of Proton 9-16 would not be available. So uh, until I closed Steam and reloaded Steam. Now, this is kind of nice, too. It tells you, hey, hey, Bonehead, you're not using this, so you probably don't need it installed. It's sucking up, you know, 400 megabytes of your hard drive space. You're not using this one. You're not using this one. You're not using this one. You're not using either one of these, so maybe you should get rid of it. Um, <laughs> but you can also choose different places to install, and that's beyond the scope of this video. You're saying, well, why would I want to install it anywhere else but Steam? totally for a different video. But for now, just understand that if you want compatibility layers for Steam, it has to be that location, at least here on Steam Deck. So this seems pretty straightforward, right? Add a version, remove a version, right? I don't need it, so get rid of it. That's pretty straightforward. It is, <laughs> I don't really need this one either. 
Uh, I certainly don't need this one. I can't remember what I installed that for, but it was for something. I'm going to leave that legacy runtime in because I'm not completely sure what it might be used for in the future, but I'm going to get rid of all the ones I know that I added. Okay, so now here we go. Nice and clean. Now you can also click show game list. Now this will show you all of the compatibility tools versus the games you have installed. So this is kind of cool, right? So let me open this up a little bit. So um, you have uh, debt compatibility, right? Unknown, unsupported, verified. Let me open this up a little bit here. Okay, so you've got a list of all the, anything that's using a uh, forced compatibility. Now you're saying, well, how come Hogwarts Legacy doesn't have a compatibility tool? Because we left it by default. You can see most of my stuff is by default. I don't, this experimental, um, I didn't set this, but it was probably overridden by Valve. And that's, that's great. Playable using Proton Experimental. So you have all sorts of interesting data here. And a lot of people, by the way, even if you've used Proton UpQT in the past, you may not even know that this game list existed. I mean, you have to like click around and anywho. So you can see um, all of your different things and you can set them. Right, so this is cool. This is cool. You can get a quick link to Proton DB, yada yada yada. Uh, so that's pretty neat. There's also a shortcut editor. Let me see if this is even worth bringing up. Right, so it shows uh, executable versus your custom launchers. Again, this is this is actually kind of cool. I mean, this is nice. This is nice functionality that a lot of people didn't know that they had access to. You can change the executable in the start directory in a much easier interface than uh, Steam Deck would give it to you. I'm sorry, Steam, the native application would give it to you. Okay, so this is the this is sort of the reigning champion. If you were to search anywhere, if you say, hey, I need, I need GE Proton, how do I do it? They're gonna tell you Proton UpQT. Proton UpQT, Proton UpQT. Okay, fine. That's Proton UpQT, and it is a perfectly great tool. But we have a contender. We have something now called Proton Plus. So Proton Plus essentially is promising itself to be the modern version of a compatibility uh, tool. So let's see how it pans out. So here are what they call the runners. So these are your Proton categories, right? GE Proton. Um, what's some of the EM Proton, right? That was one of the other ones that I had installed. So they have the Steam Tinker launch version. So these are all sort of your different versions of Proton, which is cool. Same idea, right? They're just kind of laid out in a little bit different format. And if you click the down arrow next to it, you'll quickly see all the versions. So one thing that's kind of nice about this, it feels more like what you would call a single page app where you're not clicking this, opening a window, opening a window, closing that window, opening a window. So there's a modernized sort of UI feature to this. So if I wanted this guy, right, I could get some information, which does give me a pop-up, but that's information. Um, and it's as simple to do as just clicking that button. I also like the sort of modern installer thing, right? So it's it's a feel thing, not necessarily this offers better functionality of installing GE Proton, um, but it does give me uh, a little bit better feel overall. Now, here's something that is kind of interesting. Um, it's not obvious in this list. Which one are you using and which one are you not using? Hmm. That is definitely something where the other version, Proton, uh, Proton Up QT, was better. In one glance, I saw all of the GE Protons or the other Proton versions that I wasn't um, using. In this case, all I can do is see which ones are installed by this little trash can. I would love to see unused next to this, right? I would love to see maybe another column right here that shows a check mark or an X showing whether it's used or unused. There's definitely room for improvement and that's every application, not just this one. But I do sort of like the collapsible accordion style. It's more sort of fitting to the way I like to do things. So I, I, I dig on that. But so what about the additional features? Some of the other things that we were seeing with Proton Up QT. Um, so let's go to the games. Again, this is very pleasant. I love how this is laid out. It shows me games and their compatibility tool, just like Proton Up did. Um, you can sort by compatibility tool. You can, there's some, this is, again, it's just a little bit more modern. 
Um, you have some icons over here, right? Modify the game's launch options, which is something we got to be able to do over there too, right? Um, you can also get uh, some compatibility checks, open the ProtonDB page, and you can open, now this is cool. I love this. I did not see this in Proton Up. It might be in there. Open the prefix directory. How many times in my videos have I said, go download Proton Tricks for the sole reason of finding the prefix directory? 100%, this happens all the time. Now, instead of two apps to recommend to my folks that are watching the videos, I can recommend this one because now I can just open up where that prefix folder is. Now, we know if you have, if you don't know what these prefix folders are, this compat data folder, please, I have tons of videos on this stuff to help educate you. But you can tell right away um, that it's a lot easier to just pop in here. Uh, let's see what I have that's custom. Um, uh, I don't see anything of my custom stuff. So maybe this is not as useful because I have some non-Steam games in here that aren't listed here. They were listed on the other app. So it's typically, typically you want the um, prefix of a non-Steam game. None of the non-Steam games are in here. So this is something else that this could really improve on, right? So let me just real quick pop in just so that we can compare and contrast here. Uh, if you look at Proton Up QT and we go to the games, load faster. Come on. All right, there we go. So uh, I'll just make this full screen so we can see it better. If we show the games list, you can see even my custom non Steam games are listed here. So that's really cool. Now, what would be great is, is if I could like right click this and hit, you know, open prefix. So Proton Up QT has some room to expand because honestly, everybody's prefix for Overwatch 2 is the same. It's the same number. You know, when you go into Compat Data, it's always the same number. This version, this game is always the same for everybody. These non Steam game Proton folders are different for everybody, they're randomly assigned. That's why you need access to those. And I use, of course, um, Proton Tricks to. Um, to give me that list, right? So for example, if you wanted to know what the Proton prefix was for uh, OutRun Coast to Coast, it's 242085, yada, yada, yada. I don't get that here. And um, that isn't listed here, so I can't get that here. So again, all of these tools, and this is, this is sort of a, the state of things that are sort of like weekend warrior projects, non-commercial projects, um, indie projects. Listen, they do great, and God bless them all for being there, but they always have something that's sort of a shortcoming, right? Every every app that I just showed you, all three of these, have some shortcoming that would be so great if they would just kind of merge those features together. So, yeah, and again, um, you know, even being able to just jump into the installer prefix for a Steam game is still kind of handy, right? You kind of dig on that. Um, so let's see, what else can we talk about here? Um Keyboard shortcuts, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I, I, this definitely gets a a couple of points in the visual layout, and there's definitely some things I love about this, but unfortunately, there are things I also love about Proton Up QT. So it's one of those things where it's like, what's the one tool to rule them all? Well, there's no one tool to rule them all. They each have factors that make them interesting. Anyway, I thought it'd be kind of fun to just sort of look at this um, this application and compare and contrast because again, this channel specifically has talked a lot about Proton Up QT over the years, and it's always nice to look at uh, the contender, right? The contender against the incumbent, and and and. Let's take a look at the different feature sets and what they do. So hopefully you like this. If you do, uh, leave a thumbs up down there. Subscribe to the channel so you get other videos like this. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching and uh, take care. We'll see you next time.